You set foot on foreign soil. Only this land isn't ruled by any country or government. In this land, we celebrate music. In this land, we celebrate games. In this land, we celebrate those who compose video game music. Welcome to the VG Embassy. Embassy. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the VG Embassy. This is a show centered around video game music and the amazing online community of fans and podcasters that enjoy it. My name's Ed, and on each episode I'll take the role of Prime VGM Minister and invite a guest VG Ambassador onto the show to share with us their own video game music culture. Or I may share a part of my culture on a solo show. Today is another Blind Listen episode and this is a blind listen soundtrack requested by patreon member scott McElhone. and with me today i have a repeat vg ambassador mr ben the dyad dishman dyad how are you sir hello hello it's been quite a while since we uh, did a show together i was, I was just gonna say that I, just when <laughs> everyone thought they were rid of me for good we pull you back in right yeah i've rose from the ashes of vgm podcasts past and here I am. We had a lot of positive feedback about our first episode together, the Dyad Challenge, and I want to let people know, rest assured, there is another Dyad Challenge in the works. That's right. But today is uh, something a little bit different. So, uh, Ben, you've never done a blind listen before, so how are you feeling about this one today? I'm feeling, uh, I'm interested to see how it's going to go. I just very somewhat recently finished the Guyopolis blind listen, so I feel like I'm, I'm fresh. I've got I've got the feel of how how it's going to go, how you kind of pick through and try and narrow down, and I'm trying to get in that mindset. Yeah, it comes pretty naturally. I think once we're uh, once we're in the throes of things, we'll uh, we'll know exactly what we are looking at um or not i mean it could be until the end and we're still scratching our heads about what kind of soundtrack it is for those of you that aren't familiar with blind listen shows it is a show in which me and my guest vg ambassador know next to nothing about the games and the soundtrack that we're listening to this is literally the first time we're hearing this music and as we go through the show, uh, we comment on the music. We try to maybe take clues from the soundtrack and attempt to discover or uh, attempt to theorize what kind of game <laughs> it might be, what system it might be on, uh, if possible, maybe who the composer might be, whether they're uh, you know a Japanese composer or a Western composer, etc. cetera. Uh, and then at the end of the show, we pull the metaphorical curtains back and we do some online research while we are recording and uh, figure out what kind of game it is and see how close we got to our guesses. So do you have a guess yet? Right now? Um, so, I well, what I wanted to do was at least divulge the little information I have just for okay. the sake of, of transparency. So the story behind this, Scott asked me if I'd ever heard of this game before. And to be truthful, I know the name, but I could not place it to any particular system or uh, game play or screenshots or anything. So Nova Storm was all I had to go by. I thought I originally knew what it was, but I think I was thinking of Heavy Nova, mm -hmm. um, which was another, I think it was an eight or 16 bit title, but it's completely different, not in the same realm at all. Um, I do know that the soundtrack was extremely hard to come by. Scott didn't have it himself. So I went and asked my buddy, uh, Brian from uh, Pixelated Audio and Impulse Project, because he is very good at ripping soundtracks and he's the go-to guy to get obscure video game music. Even he had some difficulty getting it. So I'm thinking that whatever we're listening to here isn't going to be from one of your common run-of-the-mill Super Nintendo or Genesis PlayStation consoles. We might be looking at right. something that's a little more uh, exotic. So might be fun. Hmm. <laughs> 
Yes, exactly. So, um, not much else to say unless you've got any other thoughts, Ben. You want to get into the first track? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pre-guess before we listen to a single song. Okay. Throw I'm it out I'm going to say Wonder Swan. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's going to be a side-scrolling shooter. And it's going to be composed by... <laughs> I don't think I can... I don't think I can even... <laughs> Come up with a, uh, yeah. All right, we'll just say Wonder, Wonder Swan. It's going to be a Wonder sure. Swan shooter. I was like, for, for Wonder Swan, you're either going to be looking at like Bandai or Square yeah. composers. So, yeah. I was trying them. to think of a, I was really trying to think of somebody who worked on Bandai stuff, but I don't have the recall for that. Yeah, me neither. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it open for now. I'm going to, I'm going to think I'm going to throw out my first okay. conjecture. Coward's way out, but okay. Once we listen to the first track. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to be too wrong, and then nobody will listen to my show anymore. So, so the way our music is set up today, um, we've got a good twenty-eight tracks to go through. So it's going to be more like the Black Matrix show that I did with Todd a while ago. It's going to be a lot of music, probably not so much talking. Um, the level names, unfortunately, are just like level one, stage one, level one, stage one, boss. So there's not much to go with in terms of the titles of the songs to give us any clues. So we are we are pretty freaking blind right now. So let's start off with track one. So this is level one. Well, actually, before I even say that, uh, I was told. So there is a game intro track, which... Uh, is technically track one of the soundtrack, but Scott explicitly told me not to listen to that track because huh. that track will um, spoil way too much information for us, and then we we kind of lose the whole concept of the show. So hmm. something about that intro track, and I think we'll save that for the last track that we play after we figure out what the game is. So that might be interesting to listen to. So we're going to start off with the level one, stage one theme from Nova Storm for an unknown console by an unknown composer. We'll be right back. Right, that was level one, stage one from Nova Storm, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say not Wonder Swan. Uh, well, let's we'll have to we'll have to get another track before we can say for sure. Oh, okay. I, cause I always I thought Wonder Swan was more like a Game Boy sounding it is, kind yeah, of. It is. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um. So so what are you thinking? Uh, this is I I can't tell for certain whether it is sequenced music. Uh, like uh, sequenced inside the hardware itself, you know, like uh, like Super Nintendo style music from the PlayStation, or whether this might be um, a like a Red Book audio or a streaming audio. Do you have any thoughts either way on that so far? I'm not sure. The sound effects that are kind of overlaid that track were really throwing me off the scent. Mm. It feels like it's sequenced, but. I'm not 
sure. Uh, the only other thing is that when you asked me about the, the when you gave me the title of the, the game is I thought LED Storm for a second. Oh, but yeah. But that it was a, uh, what, Spectrum game? So we know it's not that. We know it's not Wonder Swan. So we're narrowing it down. LED Storm was uh, on a whole bunch of other European computer, like Amiga uh-huh. and stuff like that. So yeah. But definitely not from there. Uh, yeah, those sound effects. So one of the thing that Brian told me that I had forgotten to divulge uh, is that this is a recording from the line out of whatever device is used to play this game. He was very cautious not to uh, tell me what was actually playing this game. So it's not like somebody ripped the soundtrack out of the game's files and we're listening to a conversion or anything like that. So this is mm-hmm. actually like, you know, audio wires plugged into the console or computer or whatever it is. Um, so I don't know whether those sound effects are there because that's just kind of how the game sounds when the music is playing or whether it's part of the actual soundtrack itself. So right. I don't know, maybe we'll have some more clues about that as we go on through the uh, through the episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking... Uh, at least as far as eras go, this is probably early to mid 1990s uh, in terms of uh, sound and genre oh, of yeah. the music. Yeah, I think you're dead on there. And I also think that maybe some sort of CD media. Uh, I don't know. It feels like it's early, early CD audio. I, I know it would be really. Di- if it were CD audio, it would be very easy to get and we wouldn't be having to worry about a line out recording, but. I don't know, something like early non-cartridge format game. I think that's all I can really get at this point from it. Yeah. you're uh, Having listened to your prior Blind Listen shows, you're a lot better at narrowing things down than I was in my car. So <laughs> I'm going to go step by step. And right now I'm confident that it's not a Wonder Swan game, although we'll wait and find out. And mm-hmm. it is not a Spectrum game. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, post post 16-bit era at least. So we can at least guarantee that for sure. Yeah. Other than that, we'll have to listen to more to find out. So are you ready for the next track? Let's do it. All right, so this is level one, stage one, boss. We'll be right back. Level one, stage one, boss from Nova Storm. Um, more of the the same style of music, I guess. Yeah. Very drum and bass, uh, but not not drum and bass genre, but just drums and bass, uh, right. with more of those sound effects. And um, Ben, you were you were telling me that you have a theory, uh, and I'm very interested to hear what it is. Yeah, there's something about something about like the samples of the. I don't know, it feels like a jet plane flying over or like mm-hmm. the squealing of the tires. It's just, I wonder if it's something weird like Amiga CD or something, but I don't really know well enough about, I assume that's probably just Red Book Audio. I don't really, off the top of my head, know how the Amiga CD worked, but I wonder if it's some oddball computer system. The other thing that was kind of, I was hesitant is I don't know why that would make it so that you needed to record it from a line out, but... Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe it's a a full motion video based game, like Sewer Shark or something uh-huh. like that. Sure. Be- yeah. Because then that would be very hard to get the audio from because you can't really separate the audio from the video in those older consoles uh, in any uh-huh. easy way. 
Interesting. And then that would explain the sound effects, too, because if those are built into the audio that's coupled with the environmental animations on the full motion yeah. video. I like this um, theory. Yeah, so no idea what system it might be from. I mean, it could be literally from any system if it's FMV. Um, then it would just be streaming audio and any any console could do it. But uh, I'm going to lean in that direction. Um, mm-hmm. There's a heck of a lot of music here, so it would be a lot of full motion video and audio to put on one CD. So maybe it's a multi-disc game. I don't, I don't really know yet about that. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's my theory. I'm going to stick to that one at least until I'm either proven wrong or uh i'm uh, pushed in a different direction so I like uh, it yeah uh ready to move on to the next one i'm ready all right so it uh, looks like the way this structure is set up for this game is there are uh four levels and each level has up to four different stages in them so we just listened to the stage one boss from level one and so now we're moving on to stage two of level one i guess we can see if there's any significant difference in the way the music is handled between levels uh within these uh these stages that we're listening to so that could be interesting right all right so let's hit level one stage two and we'll be back in a minute Level one, stage two, from Nova Storm. Hmm, I don't know. It sounds we're not we're not getting much <laughs> new clues here because it's 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 no it's uh the music seems to be building towards something, but it seems to be staying in this same kind of general sound area. Uh, this, this this is very similar to the music that I used to listen to in the '90s. Uh, it's like a subgenre of industrial music called EBM not EDM like electronic dance music like they have today uh, EBM stood for electronic body music and it was kind of a more aggressive uh, electronic music you know away from all the trance and stuff that was really popular during the mid 90s I do get some trance like elements to oh for sure with like I don't know the bells or yeah, something that... those kind of like sweeping pads and stuff mm-hmm. um, yeah. the, the jet or airplane or whatever they are, the sound effect noises seem a little more pronounced in this particular track. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like those swooshes come in where you might hear cymbal crashes or like another sweeping bell pad or something in the song. It feels like they're lined up with the soundtrack right? in a way that the soundtrack is, is following the action that's going on in the screen somehow. So... It's all coordinated somehow. So I don't know. I'm 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 still leaning in that full motion video direction. Uh, yeah. Nothing swaying me from that. I think that I don't know. You're you're when you said it, so I can sort of I sort of buy into that. You were talking about when we were listening that, for example, Mega Race, and that is a game that I hold close to my heart, and I could see this being a similar 
experience with this music playing like it that all is very cohesive in my brain yeah yeah for sure i mean for people that don't know mega race it's a uh i used to play it on the 3do way back in the day it's a game where you are uh, it's, it's a setup very similar to like rad razor uh but your car is a sprite that's in front of you and uh, you're driving through cityscapes and such but the uh, the entire screen is basically a full motion video, and you are racing against other cars, and you've got weapons and stuff. But you're you're a sprite that kind of moves back and forth on this full motion video background, mm-hmm. uh, and so it would it would probably act a lot like what we're theorizing here. Except I, I feel like with the sound effects built into the music, this would be more of an auto scrolling kind of a game. Whereas Mega Race, you would control the speed of the full motion video by accelerating and decelerating your car. Oh, yeah. So. Another consideration is there's so many bosses. Yeah, like, that's it's got. I don't know how you would necessarily do that with a full motion video game. I'm not. I because to me it just comes up with like I, in my mind I'm just thinking of like racing games and you don't typically have really bosses. So who knows? True, true. Well, I mean, as we listen to more boss tracks as we get to them, we might be able to maybe pick out sound effects or parts of music that might clue yeah. us into that. Yeah. So, um, But before we get to the next boss track, we've got one more stage track to go. This is Level 1, Stage 3 from Nova Storm. We just heard level one, stage three from unknown, 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 Nova Storm. <laughs> right. Uh, a little bit of difference there, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I actually really enjoyed the uh, change up there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. With so there was a, a change in musical genre. Mm-hmm. I was a little more. I got some like elements of maybe some uh, like Jamaica dub there. Yeah, um, some funk. And also a change in that there was a lack of sound effects. Right. Which is interesting. And then there was that kind of like hard end there right before the loop. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Sounds like something just started firing laser guns uh, or something. Um, So my theory is that maybe this game has multiple styles of play. Hmm. So maybe stage one and stage two have you flying through a whatever, right? Yeah, um, on, yeah. on your on your way to this stage three, where stage three now you are inside wherever you've flown to, and now maybe you're on foot, right? Or 
either side scrolling or first person or you know some sort of part of the game where you, sound effects would not make sense to be yeah. built into the music you kind of go at your own pace what do you think about that i think that it's a interesting theory that i buy the only thing that i'm wondering is if this is a level where you go at your own pace then why is there the hard ending to it oh true true yeah which is not okay. to say that there might not be the case later maybe there is for all we know this could be like a you know, i guess probably wouldn't be a cut scene but it's strange to me that it does have the very precise finish yeah well unless part of the line out recording means you have to play the game to record it and that's just what happened in the game I don't know. That's kind of out there, but it's, yeah. I guess, a possibility. Well, the next track we're going to listen to is Stage 3 Boss. So maybe these kind of laser beams, they kind of blend into the next yeah. track that we're going to listen to. So let's let's head into that track. We'll listen to Level 1 Stage 3 Boss and uh, see if we can glean any extra information about that. So we'll be right back. That was level one, stage three, boss. <laughs> and that was less of a, a musical track and more of a visit to the dentist for a root canal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Maybe the lasers at the end of stage three, like you were saying, let loose the boss that was in the cage. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man, because like... <sighs> this soundtrack is doing me a heckin' bamboozle. Um <laughs> This track sounded like the direct-to-DVD Saw sequel, like something you'd hear on the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, how would you, like, it feels like this is the music before a boss, you know? Like, you're, they're like, wandering yeah, down right. a corridor, and you hear these roars in the background. It doesn't mm-hmm. actually sound like you're facing off against this boss. Yeah. So I'm not sure how how that works because it's there's no like boss battle track after this. The next track is like level one stage four. So uh, this might be the only audio cues we have for this particular boss. Man, I am. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I need. I. I can't wait to see some gameplay footage of this game once we're yeah uh, done with this show because I, I need to see how these pieces fit together because it's just they're not meshing together for me yeah right now i don't know any 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 theories about the way this boss music might work or boss ambiance yeah i was trying to think about how how this works how like how how it all fits together and i'm still think your your theory about the gameplay being sort of divided into different you know distinct types like a flying and walking type might make sense but Mm. then i don't know how this exactly falls into play. It could just be not a great on point song. Like maybe it's just a little bit tone deaf and it just they said give me a boss music and he's like, Alright, here you go, here's this weird true ambient whatever. I got kind of like a desert crashed sort of thing with maybe there's some wind and there or like a rancor pit where you're fighting some monster out in the sands or oh, something. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe. Or, um, or maybe there's a, a giant boss in the background and he's like sending minions out to you and that's that's the roaring you hear of him in the background right. while you're fighting him. Interesting. So let's move on to level one, stage four, and we will see what other clues this soundtrack holds for us.
All right, we are back. That was level one, stage four, from the game Nova Storm. Well, what did you think? I uh, loved it. I really liked this one. It uh, threw me for a loop because I'm I'm over here ready for more kind of uh, aggressive dark techno-y stuff, and uh-huh. we got a very kind of 90s. It starts off like a power ballad, but then gets into more of like an adult contemporary rock song yeah. towards the end. It has a lot of really neat solos and instrumental parts. Uh, you were right. you were commenting on the sweeps. Uh, and that this composer just absolutely must love sweeping sounds, right? I, I get like a kind of a never-ending story. This guy is riding Falcor, Falcor with his keyboard, and he has <laughs> the two layers of keyboards, and the top layer is only for sweeps, and he's got his arm in the air. It's like the 80s are back. Exactly. Something that I didn't really think about until just now, though, is that this is still part of the same stage, and it is such a departure from the earlier tracks that I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, well, part of the same level, you mean, right? So it's level one, stage four. So yeah, this is right. Yes. Same same level as stage one, stage two, and stage three. But right, yeah, right, right. very, very different. Uh, and especially coming off of that kind of terrifying stage three boss <laughs> yes. track, you know? Right. Um, it, it feels like maybe there was something very terrible that went on uh, during the stage three boss, and now you're, whatever you've vanquished, you have this moment of kind of peace and prosperity or something there's mm-hmm. suddenly the the clouds part and there's rainbows and flowers everywhere and now you get to fly or run through uh this much more positive kind of colorful landscape while this kind of epic heroic music plays yeah yeah i don't know man so yeah i mean this this is really good like we were talking before it, it, it's it's a much more coherent song it's kind of more traditionally composed right some of the previous tracks sounded more uh, I think you called it video gamey while we were listening to the music. Right. Yeah. Just kind of like uh, designed for a purpose. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Designed to give a little more ambiance, and this one kind of definitely could stand by itself uh, outside of the video game as a as a pretty cool tune. Yeah. Um, my favorite of the soundtrack so far, but we're only yeah seconded. We're only about a quarter into it. So, are you uh, pretty confident that this is Western composed? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's definitely Western composed. I don't know of many Japanese soundtracks that sound like this. I, I agree. That that was my impression as well. Yeah, even as even as far as like the the hardware and the instruments used, it's it's very well. Suntada used sounds like this a lot, but didn't compose like this. So I don't know. There's that flash, that flashiness of Japanese composition around this era that's kind of missing in this. This is a little more. Uh, understated, I think, which mm. lends me towards more of like an American or a Western style. So, that said, let's listen to the boss track. I don't want to call it song or music because who knows what we're going <laughs> to hear when we listen to boss yeah. tracks. And, more and guttural moans. Yeah, so uh, we will be right back after stage four boss from level one of Nova Storm. Right, that was level one, stage four boss from the game Nova Storm, requested by Scott McElhone. Scotty, what are you doing to us, man? This yeah, is a weird-ass game. Um, Scotty Mac. 
Seriously. Uh, so not anything like the boss music that we had just listened to. No. No uh, extremely terrifying roars. Uh, this one is a... I, I think, Ben, you described it best when we were listening to it. This is GoldenEye music. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like they just took all of the GoldenEye samples and were like, well, I'm going to make something else with this, but... Use all the instruments. Yeah, and then we'll throw in a pan flute at the end. Yeah, for, yeah. For some reason, uh, it's it's a cool track. It's it's well done. Uh, it's I guess more of a compliment to the stage four music itself. You know, in in being that it's more of a structured song. Um, yeah. So maybe that has something to do with the way that level one stage four is set up in this game. Maybe uh, I don't know. There's something more musical about it whereas you know mm-hmm. like like stage one through three was more of a less colorful more technological kind of um the way these songs are assigned to the bosses is very interesting to me because mm-hmm. there are just from seeing the track listing i see that there are mo- multiple bosses but there the boss music there's no urgency or propulsion to it it is not what you would maybe consider a boss music to be right the last one was more ambient and scary this one was more i don't know kind of laissez-faire this is like level select menu music yeah 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 i don't know i want i definitely want to see some some video of these bosses to see how this music fits right into yeah. you know maybe it's i don't know i was gonna say maybe it's maybe the bosses are like puzzles well, or something yeah. You know, maybe sure. uh, maybe you're trying to figure something out. Um, I don't know. That wouldn't really explain. Maybe we're at a text adventure. It's like a yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Phoenix Wright style game or something. <laughs> it could be. I don't know if that would explain the sound effects in the other songs, though. No, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the bosses you have more of your own time to try to beat them, where the stages themselves are kind of an auto-scrolling. A fair, I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh, but we are moving on to level two now for the next set of tracks um, after ending level one, stage four with this boss. So maybe there will be some sort of drastic change in the way the music is set up or the genre. Let's see if level one and level two have any distinct differences from each other. So let's listen to level two, stage one from Nova Storm.
Wow. Okay, level two, stage one from Nova Storm. Uh, unknown composer, unknown system. But uh, so we're thinking you are uh, in Egypt or some sort of desert Middle Eastern area mm -hmm. at this point because we've got some sitar going on there. Uh, there's that really cool little flute sitar call and response section that was really neat. Yep. A nice kind of fuzzy warm bass off in the uh, left channel there. Uh, I really like this track. You were you were saying it was your favorite over the uh, level one stage four. I think I'm still with level one stage four. It's a little more rock, a little more in my mm -hmm. wheelhouse, but this is still still a really good track. What did you like about this one so much? I I'm not sure. I just I think it really took me by surprise. Uh, hmm. As much as the that kind of like rock ballad track was not in the same vein as the rest of the more industrial music, this is completely out of left field. Yeah. We're not in Kansas anymore. We have the more happy, even just thematically, like the emotions that it is conveying is very different, I think, than the rest. This is... Yeah, it's just it's just strange and trying to f trying to figure out how it all fits together. Just noodling my brain. Yeah, and and then there's that that elephant in the room, the one that we didn't talk about uh, last time we heard it in a track. Uh, so you we get this kind of staticky uh -huh. uh, vocal phrase. Uh, I can't really make out what it says, but then things get really weird. Right after that, the music gets a little more intense. Uh, there are some uh, accelerated. And accentuated sound effects going on. I described it as uh, what a million ants tap dancing, uh -huh, yep. uh, <laughs> or something, and then lots of whooshing sweeps. So I don't know. I mean, that's still cluing me in that it's probably full motion video because that feels like a scripted event. Yeah, you know, kind of hard coded into the soundtrack right. that you're listening to. So something has to be pulling you in that direction as you're as you're playing the game. Yeah, I think I think you're you've got a good beat on on that with the FMV game because there's a lot of things that would otherwise not really make sense. It's since it seems like there's very specific events that are happening. Yeah. Like those those weird radio things and the static and all that. So I think uh, I think you might be onto something with that. Pretty much still sticking with that and I think it probably will till the end of the show. Uh, yeah, so let's move on to level two, stage two, and we'll see what direction this one brings us in. We're back. That was level two, stage two from the game Nova Storm. From the system, who knows? From the composer, 
Uh, someone trapped in a fever dream? I'm not sure. Yeah, man. What the hell are we listening to right now? <laughs> yeah. No, but this started off really good. And then, yeah. I don't know, the end really killed it for me. Those random yeah. sound effects just came yeah. out of nowhere. And I was like, what? It's it's all over the map. Yeah. It started out with that bass that was just like throwing down the gauntlet. It uh for for any of you this is a reference for a very small group of people, which I guess maybe that's my forte, but there's a song called Hickey Burr which has Bill Cosby uh like scatting over it and I think it was a he recorded it with some famous actual musician, but for some reason this that's kind of the vibe that I was getting from it. And then interesting at the end, the sound effects, like I said, when we were listening is seems like stock sound effects from a game making program, like the, the generic laser blast, the generic bounce sound effect. Yeah. Yeah. This brings up a good point. So we haven't been playing a boss track after every single level. Um, they've kind of been randomly scattered. So uh-huh. the way the way it goes is in the game there is technically a boss after every stage, but a lot of those boss tracks were like 10, 15 seconds long. Okay. And and Scott recommended that I cut like anything under 30 seconds because they were all kind of those ambient tracks that we listen to with like the stage three boss. That's probably like the mm-hmm. out, the outlier for the ambient stuff so my guess is that in this particular stage you know you're listening to this really cool track and then those sound effects that come in towards the end are like you going into whatever area the boss is currently located in okay that Um, makes sense and we're just not playing that boss track for this particular stage because it was one of those very simple kind of sound effect loops that wouldn't really make any sense to play in a, on, a, on a music show. So, right. So yeah, I mean that that makes sense in terms of you know if I were the, if I were the music composer for this game, I think I would feel a little disappointed or stiffed if I took a lot of pride in my work because here I am making these great songs and then they're just <laughs> right. getting like these. Goofy sound effects, I don't know, the equivalent of like, yeah, auditory vomit put all over them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I wish I, I, I did have access to like this particular track without that stuff at the end. But you know, in the in the context of the game, maybe once I play the game or see the game in action, I might appreciate why it's there more. But just from an audio perspective, it really does kind of uh, jar you away from the enjoyment of the music for sure. Yeah. So oh, one other thing I wanted to say. Sure. You picked up on on the kind of like the radio voice that time. Oh yeah, you thought it might have said something like something three miles away. Yeah, it sounds like. And it's... I thought that that was interesting. Um, kind of lends again more to your theory that there's sort of like this is some sort of belt scrolling game mm-hmm. where you are knowing that you're going to come up against something because you can't get out of it. All you can do is die before you get there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you have some sort of heads-up display and a guy's face pops up and he's like, you're almost to the boss or, you know, mm-hmm. something is just five seconds away from you. So uh, that would, you know, again, more lend itself towards uh, those scripted full motion video events. But right. um, I don't know. I'm not sure what else I need to say about this one. You want to move on to stage three? I'm ready. All right, let's hear some more music from Nova Storm, level two, stage three.
So you're still listening to Nova Storm. That was level two, stage three. Creepy. Huh. I think is what we said a lot of. Yeah. So like when we first started listening, because Ben and I are doing a remote recording here, I, I I thought he was whispering weird things at the beginning of the track. Like that was his voice and not the song itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought the same. I thought I was like, why is Ed whispering? Yeah. So and, and it turns out that's like bizarre, like creepy backwards, like whispering in the music, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't really fit the tone of the song, which is what threw me off so much. Yeah. And then there's this point at about a minute and 30 seconds into the track where a guy says something to the effect of, I found a bunch of something. I don't know what's in here, but I'm sure as hell going to find out. So it's like exploring a cave or going somewhere. Yeah. So there's multiple people in this game i mean one guy's talking to another guy so it's not like you're right. one man against everybody you know maybe you've got some some allies that you're fighting alongside or something well there's the guy the voice that warns them something is coming up in three miles every time before the boss right, fights right. too so that makes sense and that seems like a different voice from like a different kind of device right. it's got a different effect on it so yeah, um, yeah that might be an automated warning from your security system or your your guidance system if you are flying so maybe that's just like you know like the uh the enterprise computer would just tell you that you're you know so many light years away from a star base or whatever Mm -hmm. so it could be an artificial voice but the the voice before that sounded much more like like a real person you know that you were communicating with um although maybe you're just doing the hero thing where you just talk out loud to yourself true for the benefit of the uh, audience that, of course, uh-huh. the protagonist does not realize is there. Um, right. Music itself, though, was really good. I mean, what'd you, what'd you think of this particular track? I liked it. I thought it was uh, was like the, the gamelan and the, like, getting into that nice groove. I, I referenced that, it, it was, especially with, like, the kind of dissonant whispers that it is Hiroki Kakuta approved music. Yes, absolutely. Kind of freaky, uh, but still kind of fun at the same time. This one is a little more repetitive. Yeah. Uh, It's not so much like the couple of tracks we've listened to previously where they've been structured more like regular songs. So uh, I don't know what that means in terms of gameplay. Maybe you're going through more of a repetitive kind of stage where it's all kind of a similar background, Mm -hmm. whereas the other ones you were kind of visiting different locations as you were flying, driving, walking, whatever. So... Uh, the gentleman during the song wanted to find out what was in the cave, and the next track we're listening to is the stage three yeah. boss track. So let's see. I could hear the I could hear the roars. The roars are brewing yeah. right at the end there. So I think we're in store for another saw sequel. I cannot wait. So uh, let's find out. We'll be right back. Stage three boss. back that was level two stage three boss from nova storm uh guttural growling uh-huh. over kind of a positive video gamey style song yeah uh two tastes that don't necessarily taste great together <laughs> uh in my opinion i don't know I, I i just it's it's obviously a boss track because that's what it's called and there are those growls but i if, if you took away the growls and there wasn't a boss label on this particular MP3 that we're listening to, I would not have ever guessed that this would have been a boss track. No, I agree. I think... I'm not sure what I would have thought. This is based you know, just by itself, but maybe like going down the long corridor to lead up to high-level NPC you need to interact with or something, but not, not really boss. Yeah, yeah. Or like an introductory, like a... 
something that plays like before you start the game, the pre-title screen. Right. Yeah. Sets up the, the storyline kind of a uh, track. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to think that the uh, mixing on this game is off. Like the roars and the swoops and the sound effects are so much louder than the music. Yeah, and I don't know if that is by design or if the music and the sound effects are created by different devices in the hardware and it's just the line out recording that kind of necessitates that they're kind of mixed together so i don't really know how that works Mm -hmm. yeah this particular track sounds like it could loop i mean the way it ends right uh feels like it could go right into the song all over again so maybe this is a, a like a boss stage where there is more of a you know, you keep having to shoot it or hit it or whatever it is that you do to it until it finally dies. Whereas, you know, the stage levels seem to have much more of a cold, concrete ending to them. So you're only playing them for a specified amount of time. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. Maybe you kind of like circle around it in a way so that you keep looping some way. I don't know. Could be could Maybe be anything. Yeah. yeah. Got to find a weakness, open the weakness, hit it in the weakness. If you don't, you got to go another pass. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and eventually you just wear it down enough to uh, to blow it up and move on to the next level. So the next level is the last stage of level two. This is level two, stage four. And uh, I don't know, level one, stage four was a big departure from the sound of the other level one tracks. That's so true. maybe we'll see a different equivalent departure in this track. So let's give it a listen and we will return. Level 2, Stage 4 from Nova Storm. And Ben, you brought up a really good point while we were listening to this track, and that is that uh, Nova Storm is a very generic game title, and it doesn't really clue us in yeah. to even the genre, time period, any sort of atmosphere this game right. might have. I mean, you could kind of apply Nova Storm to, I don't know, I maybe it leans more towards kind of a sci-fi thing, but it could very well be like the name of a... Uh, a spell in a mm-hmm. fantasy setting too. I mean, I do think that the uh, radio crackly uh, dialogue pieces that we've heard kind of lend itself more towards sci-fi. But um, yeah, coming into the coming into the show, I had no idea what time period the game would have taken place in. Um, that being said, this entire level two uh, area seems to take place in some sort of Middle Eastern. So maybe maybe we are on Earth. Uh-huh. Uh, that's kind of cluing me in at least because. This is a very localized kind of uh, ethnic kind of music that we've been listening to. Right. Um, this this particular track is like it's I don't know like I, I don't think the com- the composer is Middle Eastern. Like this all seems no, like very no. generic cliche um, 
like Madonna's version of Middle Eastern, like top 40 kind of track going on here. I'm, I'm even wondering if it's not just being used as an analog or a shorthand for desert and we're on some mm. desert planet somewhere and it's just True. like, what sounds sandy? Get some sitar. Sitar. <laughs> Get some of this stuff. So make it make it sound like you're trying to uh, charm a snake with a flute. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Everybody thinks of deserts when we think of that stuff. Um, yeah. And of course the gamelan, you know, that's that's your typical deserty stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix mix mashing a bunch of uh, Middle Eastern instruments and trying to put a kind of an '80s uh, synth rock beat behind right. it to update it a little bit. Yeah. Um, not that it's it's and it's I, I don't want to sound like I'm saying I don't like the music. I mean, I like the music. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just not... In this day and age where when something is representative of a culture, I think we tend to kind of bash it if it's not authentic to that culture. You know what I mean? There's a lot Mm -hmm. of appropriation going on, so while that might not have been so faux pas when this game was made, nowadays it's like you can't just put a sitar in there and pretend. You know what I mean? You need to actually know what you're doing with it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, that being said, uh, there was a very tiny little three second part at the end of this track where an electric guitar came in yep. and the song immediately faded out. And I was like, yep. wait, hold on. I wanted to see what that thing did. And we kind of, uh, posited that that might appear in the stage four boss track, which is going to be the next one we're listening to. Uh, but then I also pointed out that every time we think a particular sound, a sound effect that appears at the end of a track would lead into the boss track the boss track sounds nothing like it so which makes me wonder what the heck is going on with that music so like we get like this big power chord at the end and then it just goes to dead air and then we're in the next boss music which is gonna be i don't know i predict heavy banjo coming out heavy banjo Mm -hmm. i predict uh classical uh maybe something by uh straczynski or something like that all right So uh, (laughs) let's see which one we're closer to. (laughs) We'll be right back after listening to Stage 4 Boss from Level 2 of Nova Storm. That was different. We just heard <laughs> level two, stage four boss from the game Nova Storm. What did you think? Well, we were, uh, uh, I, we were right. Well, we were right and wrong. I mean, we were uh, <laughs> surprised to actually hear that guitar come back in mm-hmm. from where it left off. So I feel like this is, uh, these are two tracks that kind of belong together and were maybe just split uh, by whoever recorded the soundtrack, which is kind of neat but also punctuated by these ridiculous sound effects that just yeah. totally detracted from any good that the song was trying to do. And, of course, I need to say that I'm sure that whatever is going on in the game, these sound effects are part of the action that's going on. Right. But again, us without any context whatsoever, it's like, it's it sounds like we're trying to listen to, like, Looney Tunes. Yes, yeah. So distracting. Right. Um, I, I felt like there were goats... Uh, being chased by police officers that were flying jets or something. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. that's the uh, what I got. But there was a pretty cool rock going on behind it. Didn't sound Middle Eastern at all. There's divergent quality in the samples that they have used in this game mm. because you get like some pretty decent guitar and especially like the bass sounds pretty nice and things like that with the instruments. But then whatever these sound effects are are very rudimentary in a lot of ways and yeah yeah don't quite match the quality of the rest i wonder what the reasoning for that is maybe they just 
didn't need as many, so it wasn't as much time was spent on it. Feels off. Yeah, and but then you also get some really like within the music itself. Never mind the sound effects. Um, even like in the previous track that we were listening to, there'd be this really nice kind of sitar sample, and then there would be a call and response with another mm-hmm, keyboard yeah. instrument that sounded really fake and right, yeah, kind yeah. of like didn't have any reverb, but just kind of got cut off at the end. Yeah. So there's a disparate number of instruments that are low quality versus high quality. Yeah. You know, maybe there's some live instrumentation and then some synthesized instruments and the, the just the synthesizers weren't up to being able to be accompanied by live instruments. I, I have no idea. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, or maybe it was for a particular effect. Maybe it has something to do with the game. Maybe there's some uh, authentic kind of stages with some very fake-looking automatons wandering around. Or maybe it's a doujin game by some sort of basement savant and just stole as many samples as he could regardless of the quality. That would make sense too. Just some dude in his basement making a full motion video game. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Let's not even uh, <laughs> hypothesize what the type of game would be for that gentleman. Sewer Shark as created by Mrs. Johnson's third grade class. <laughs> um... So so we have officially finished level two. We are halfway through the game now. There are four levels in this game. All right. Let's uh, let's start on stage one, level three, and see if we can... Ice World. It's oh, coming. You think it's Ice World? I'm going to guess Ice World. I'm thinking volcanic. I'm thinking lava and fire. Oh, that, was, yeah, that was my second, but I think I think I want it to be Ice World because I know you would love oh, it. Oh, yeah. You know how much I love <laughs> ice levels. All right. So uh, let's take a listen to stage... One, level three, from Nova Storm. A new level, a new stage. <laughs> level three, stage one from Nova Storm. Uh, I don't know. Well, I said volcano, and that didn't that didn't really remind me of anything volcanic at all. So probably no. not that. Uh, you said Ice World, and mm-hmm. I was not um, heading in that direction until those bells came in at the end. Yeah, and that sounds a little bit more wintry. So I don't know. I think you you might be more on the nose than I was with my prediction for this one the bells universal video game language for ice world exactly uh aside from that what you what you think of this track i i like this one i thought that uh, like i said when we were listening to it this this one sounds the most radio ready mid 90s dance music like i could see this coming out from like an alice dj type mm-hmm. or i don't know i don't know can't think of too many of the era kind of electronica musicians but i think it uh has a lot to do with the lack of sound effects going on over it as well yeah so yeah that's there's no point. distractions there even though it was kind of um repetitive i think even the songs that are more uh complex in this soundtrack uh, i think i subconsciously downgrade them if there's a lot of sound effects going on over them yeah Yes, you're right about that. So maybe that has something to do with it. And and I can't... I'm trying not to fault the composer or the soundtrack for having those sound effects because I have I have a feeling that uh-huh. that's just the way the game is and you can't really avoid that. So yeah. it's not like the composer just yeah. decided to put lots of, you know, sweeps and swoops in there for the benefit of the music or anything like that. So, um, But yeah, so I think um, maybe listening to stage two might give us a little more indication of what kind of uh, area we're going to be looking at in level three. So what do you say we listen to that one? Style it in. All right. Level three, stage two, Nova Storm. Let's hit it.
right, so we were uh, just talking about how sound effects uh, subconsciously <laughs> let us degrade the quality of the music we're listening to, and I think we just hit upon a perfect example of that. That was level three, stage two, from Nova Storm, yeah. and uh, you know, I wanted to like, I, w- I wanted to say, hey, that music was great, but all I want to say is, good God. And you described it perfectly. It's a little kid with a with a toilet roll, uh, cardboard sword, mm-hmm. coming at you and slicing at yep. you. Yeah. Hey, Uncle Dyad, you're dead. Uh. <laughs> hey, you got to fall on the ground and hold your tummy. Okay. Then I'm gonna kick you. Oh no! Wait. <laughs> this just got dark. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the song does sound wintry. I will I will give it to you there. I wish I could have gotten past the sound effects a little bit better so that I could kind of dive a little bit more into the actual music itself. It was very hard to get around those uh, yeah, those shooks. Right at the beginning, I thought Golden Eye in the Snow. Mm-hmm. And I think the bells are pretty nice. Like, it sounds, it's very satisfying. It's a satisfying instrument. But, but yeah, I, I was very highly distracted by the mouth noises. I'm going to say uh, probably like Ice Cave, mm-hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah. you're flying through an ice cave, and those uh, shooks are uh, like stalactites, stalagmites, pillars that you're maybe flying past, and okay. making whooshing sounds yeah. as you fly past them. That would make sense. They're all, and I don't know if this has to do with the way the song was recorded or not, but they, they all appeared in the right speaker for me. Was that the same for you? Did you... I did not notice because I'm okay. not observant. Okay. It felt like they were all on one side. So I don't know why, if they were stalactites or, you know, objects you were racing past, if the, why they would all be on one side. Um, right. But maybe that means that it could be an Amiga game where the audio was hard panned left and right. And that's just where that sound effect happened to be from. So something to consider. Maybe it's an Amiga CD32 game with full motion video. Hmm. Boy, that would be funny if I backed into that one. That would be a combination of all of our kind of theories rolled into one. <laughs> so, interesting. Welp, are you ready for uh, level three, stage three? I am ready. All right, let's hit it. Right, stage three, level three from mm-hmm. Nova Storm, mm-hmm. as requested by Scott McElhone. Scotty Mac. Um, Scott is um, confusing me right now. Yeah. And I, so uh, I also did forget to mention at the top of the show, uh, what I've been doing for the past couple of blind listens is having the requester write up a testimonial that we will read at the end of the show so yeah good i'm dying to know the story behind this yeah and i'm trying to figure out i think i'll have i think i'll read scott's testimonial first and then we'll go and maybe do some research on the game i was trying to figure out which order to do that in but i kind of want to hear what he says 
right after we listen to the music, you know? Uh-huh. Um, get his kind of opinion on it, and then we'll kind of fill in the blanks with the information that we find. Uh, that being said, this track is is really good until it kind of takes that hard right turn yeah. at the end. Um, Go Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the instruments. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of range in this song. It's very nice, deep, fuzzy bass line and some very rich, uh, higher keyboard notes up top. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of different kinds of keyboards. Uh, the violins, uh, guitar, you get a little yeah. bit of... Yeah, uh, some bell pads, I really like so. the guitar. The guitar they were using in this song, which first time they were using it, and we're halfway through the game, I guess. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like everything was. I feel like this level is kind of a little bit more relaxed. Maybe something easier to get through, and then uh, you get that little drum fill, and then suddenly, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to describe the mood change that it takes. It's like, a uh, like bipolar you know like all yeah. of a sudden everything is just the notes are kind of flat they're like very muted orchestra hits bump 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 right um, and it just kind of repeats over and over again so i have a feeling that that's where the boss finally like shows up at the end of the level and then maybe I mean, we're going to listen to the stage three boss track next so maybe that's more of a continuation of what we just listened to so you want to get into that boss theme and we'll find out let's do it All right, let's take a listen to Level 3, Stage 3 Boss from Nova Storm. Right, that was the boss from stage three from level three from nova storm which came out on the blank system in the blank year <laughs> composed by blank all of these blanks will be filled in hopefully by the end of the show um yeah so i guess this is a appropriate boss track as we were talking yeah. about yeah it's it's the most on the nose boss type music. Agreed. Maybe not on the nose is maybe not the right way to put it. That sounds a little bit more pejorative than I mean. I think this was a very good. This screams boss music. It yeah, and it goes back to the sound of the uh, level one music. At least yeah. level mm-hmm. one, like stage one through three, where it was very right. kind of uh, electro industrial sounding. Um, this reminds me of big like manufacturing plants or uh, yeah, like yeah. Uh, cybernetic soldiers marching or something. So uh, there were a few sound effects here and there, but they didn't really detract too much from the music. They weren't like, yeah. they were in time with the music and they were also sporadic enough where it didn't really completely, like like like, like that Ice Cave track where you just couldn't listen yeah. to the music because of <laughs> yeah. everything that was going on in front yeah. of it. So Also, I thought it was, it was a little bit uh, mixed more appropriately. It wasn't yeah. quite as overpowering as a lot of the other yeah. ones, I think. And I did, I did like this one. I thought it ended very interestingly, too, with that kind of... Uh, yeah. You said it was like a reverse symbol. To me, it almost felt like it was a sustained symbol. It, or it had a like a even sound, like shh. There was no like rising action or falling action on the crash. It was kind of interesting uh-huh. sounding. Uh, and then it just kind of ends. So maybe this is a yeah. timed boss, whereas you have to survive until the song ends or the you know the full motion video sequence ends instead of it kind of looping around until you've beaten it, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you kill it or you have to just wait until it kills itself or something. I don't know. But uh, I, we haven't really heard many boss themes that have kind of a cold end yet. So no. uh, that was an interesting thing. Oh, I liked I liked the, um, I guess, I don't know, it was maybe a square wave or whatever. This is kind of retro-y 
8 bitty sound oh, yeah. effect that the instrument they had thrown in there too I, d- I wanted to mention yeah that was an interesting part of it too you, do, you have, don't hear that much of uh, you know if this was the, the 90s mid 90s they were really uh, retro wasn't cool yet yeah. and it wasn't really retro yet either it was more no. like low tech right it's like, this ain't your grandfather's console anymore, kid. Exactly. Everybody wanted to be a modern console, mm-hmm. so uh, you don't get to hear those kind of instruments much in, in games like this, so it was kind of a neat thing to hear. So, we're going to move on to the last stage of level three, stage four, and uh, we'll be right back. We are back. That was the level three stage four music. And as Ed put it, we are in Macarenaville. Macarena Town. Macarena yeah. Planet, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely that bump, 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 bump. It's the, I think it's the same kind of chord structure as, as Macarena uses. So I'm just imagining people dancing in lines yeah. um, while jets are flying overhead for some particular reason. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Dropping off more party favors. Yes, exactly. And um, I don't know. I I don't I don't know what else to say about this one. It's it's well composed. It's uh, it's kind of repetitive, but uh, it's got uh-huh. some nice melody over that that kind of arpeggiated keyboard line there. Uh, what'd you think of it? I liked it. I mean, I liked it more before you ruined it by making me think of the Macarena. You are welcome. It had a little again that the suffered from the sound sound effect distraction right i was really trying to get past that i thought it felt like for some reason to me even though i know this is not what it is it felt like we were skiing like that was the noise of going oh over yeah okay moguls or like maybe like the mo- motion of using both of your ski poles to like propel yourself forward yep, kind of felt yep. like the wow wow we're flying we're flying yeah going through those like flag gates and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. i can definitely i think they use the same sound effect for skiing games like SSX and stuff, you know, I think uh-huh. I, I think that they probably use the exact same whooshing sound for those kind of games. I think I've heard that before. I don't know, do you think the boss is also a Macarena boss? Oh, it's a, uh, it's like Simon says, and if you get it wrong. Right. If, uh, if you don't put your left hand behind your head first, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, you put your right hand behind, you get shot down, and yeah. uh, but you get a you get up again. You're never going to keep me down. Let's get all of them. Oh, Let's get God. all these 90s classics out. I, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to do the Macarena? I, 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 I'm pretty sure I do. I, it's been a while, but I've done it at weddings. Um, okay. How about Lost Ketchup? I have, what was that? I remember that was another. I've never heard of that before. Lost Ketchup. Oh, good. I can do the Funky oh. Chicken. Okay. Uh, the Electric Slide. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Electric side, though, they tell you how to do it in the song, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. But still. What about Cup- can you Cupid shuffle? Never heard of it. That's the. Uh, I don't go to a lot well, of weddings. It's because you don't know how to do the Cupid shuffle. I guess not. Maybe I should start being a professional Cupid shuffler. Then I'll get invited to more <laughs> weddings. I don't know. <laughs> uh. So, anyways, uh, do you do you want to listen to this boss music and? 
figure it out. Yeah, we'll find out whose wedding it is best suited for. <laughs> right, exactly. I'd like to invite a video game boss to my next wedding, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Don't tell my wife. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we'll be right back after listening to <laughs> Level 3, Stage 4, Boss. We are back. That was the final boss from level three of Nova Storm. And uh, again, not a very bossy track. No. Very kind of evenly keeled and kind of calm-ish sounding. Um, Yeah. I do like those very Barry Leach style arpeggios kind of over the top of the whole thing. Very plinky, plunky. Sounds like marbles are like landing on the roof over your head or something like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a frantic feel to it, I guess. Yeah, uh, and then, you know, punctuated, of course, by these sound effects of these whooshes mm-hmm. um, going by. But they weren't as ridiculous as, like, that Ice Cave, uh, supposed Ice Cave track that we were listening to before. Right, yeah. I, th- I think what really got me about those sound effects in that particular track was that I, I'm pretty sure they were all on the right channel, and so it was... When they're in the center channel, it doesn't seem to affect my enjoyment of the song as much as if they're like kind of hard panned to one side or the other. So yeah. it makes a big difference in, in the psychology of how I'm dealing with this music here. Um, but otherwise, yeah, uh, it sounds not too different from a lot of the other tracks that we've heard. Um, I don't think the composer was really trying to do anything groundbreaking with this particular track it's a long track for a boss it's a minute and 45 mm-hmm. seconds yeah um what kind what what significance do you think that might have i'm wondering how if we're still sticking with the theory that it's some sort of fmv game or other game where you don't really control the tempo as much as you just have to stay alive and do whatever it is that you have to do it's interesting that you would have a boss fight that is you know basically twice as long as all the other Encounters, mm, yeah. If we're if we're basing it on the length of the music, and I don't think we have any reason not to, so I'm not sure if that is we're towards the end of the game, and maybe this is the last boss before the final. Well, I guess there's a boss at every level, so I guess that we could throw that theory out the window. Right, right. Now that we're this far into the game, uh, we're uh, three quarters of the way into the game, and we've only heard like one track that has any sort of spoken dialogue like that one track where there's like yeah. i don't know what's in this cave but i'm gonna find out right like that's it it's so random to have that in there you know like why isn't there any dialogue at all in any other part of the game i i i'm do you think there are like cutscenes? <sighs> are they and then maybe, maybe they just needed to do a quick transition that got added later or something they didn't have enough resources to devote to a full 
cutscene or even just like a transitional. Yeah. Even if it was just like text in between scenes That's or something. That's very possible. Um, you know, uh, now I'm kind of figuring that because of uh, when Scott told us not to listen to the game intro track at the beginning, that there's probably mm-hmm. a lot of dialogue, spoken dialogue in that, that might give us yeah. more of a clue as to what's going on. So, I don't know, maybe they take care of all that. Exposition. Environmental. Yeah, that all that exposition before the game so they don't have to explain too much as you're <laughs> yeah. playing. Yeah. I don't know. They, they just Don't front, think too much. They just front load all the story so that the rest is just action. Um, but yeah, I mean, not too much of a change at the end. Just kind of um, peters out. Yeah. Kind of a cold end. It doesn't really right. loop. So, yeah. And I guess once you beat that one, you're on to level four, which is the last level of the game. And uh, there's another four stages in level four to go through before we wrap up the show and finally figure out what the heck we've been listening to for the past hour or so. (laughs) So let's move on to level four, stage one from Nova Hold on, Ed. Oh, what's your prediction? Oh, for level four. That's right. Because, uh, let's see. Well, you were, you were pretty right with that ice. I think, I think there was some frozen elements to level three. Mm -hmm. I have a guess. I'm going to let you go first this time. I'm going to say, uh, like a Death Star, like a very, oh, okay. uh, in, not, in, not industrialized, but very, uh, technology space okay. station yeah, kind yeah. of a level. That's, that's right. my, that's my prediction. What about you? I, I'm going with like a forest or jungle type. Oh, okay. Very different from mine. Mm-hmm. So maybe, uh, maybe if we're going for the Star Wars, maybe it's like we're on Endor. Okay. Okay, so like a, a moon surrounded by technology above it. Maybe you start off in a forest and then end up in yeah. a space station. Right, isn't um, Endor the foresty place? The, yeah, it's the, well, it's the forest moon of Endor. Yeah, yeah, so that's okay. that's where they yeah. um, they shut down the generator so that they can get onto the Death Star, if I recall. Okay, yeah. just want to make sure. That's I don't the, want any new Star Wars fans to yeah. no, pitchfork Yeah, that's, that's where, the, where the Ewoks live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, okay. That's what I was thinking. We're on the same We're page good. here. We're good. All right, so let's see how Star wars and we can get with Level 4, Stage 1. Be right back. Locking on the next target.
All right, man. I feel like I just played an entire game all in one soundtrack. That was yeah. uh, stage one from level four of Nova Storm. And uh, yeah, five minutes and 21 seconds of a journey of some sort. Yeah. Uh, I really, really like this one, though. It, it goes a lot of different places, I'm assuming literally and figuratively. Uh-huh. Really cool breakdowns in the middle. I mean, we, we were we were talking, what, what were some of your favorite parts of this one? Yeah, I'm trying to think back to it, because I, I know we were talking throughout it. I really liked the uh, kind of DJ style cutting up of the like orchestra hits, the like, kind of little... Those little breakdowns. Bump, bump, fills bump, bump, and breakdowns. Bump, bump, bump. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I thought that was well done. And uh, before in the show, we were talking about the kind of disparity of, of instruments, and we, we kind of got another example of that one. We've got that kind of, again, that kind of Macarena-style keyboard line, uh-huh. and then this really kind of flat, I want to call it like the, the Capcom guitar sample, like from Mega Man X. Yeah, yeah, that's a very... Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like grating my ears. Oh, uh, so accurate. <laughs> So it just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the more textured and a little richer sounding instruments. So I don't, I don't know, you don't, like you don't ever hear that in music. Like, so I don't know how that happens because usually when somebody's Mm -hmm. using uh, or composing music, they're, they're generally using one bank of, of sounds. And it seems like this guy went out of his way to find instruments that were of lower quality than the ones that he already had yeah. so it was uh, a very interesting choice i'm not sure why that happened um i do like the composition of that i feel like if he could have upped to the guitar synth yeah uh sample quality then that section would have rocked really hard but it kind of uh, just kind of became a distraction with that with that kind of messed up <laughs> guitar sample there. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of unfortunate, and it's very. I don't think it will be revealed to us, but I wonder if there's any kind of information out there about why the composer did that. Yeah, I mean, it could also be composers as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be uh-huh. just one dude, so or or woman or whoever. Um, so maybe if there were two composers that might clue us in, maybe they somebody came in after the soundtrack was made and they were like, we need a solo over this. And he's like, well, I brought my Casio with me. <laughs> and they were like, sure, use it, whatever, we don't care. We're paying you minimum wage anyway. Um, mm-hmm. And that's all that they got, so who knows. Uh, I don't know, but I am now curious after this giant... Uh, nearly five and a half minute level what the boss will sound like at the end of level four stage one so let's take a listen to that and we'll be right back with more conjecture and humorous antics we are back that was the level four stage one boss music i don't know about you ed but i uh forgot that i was listening to a boss track Mm -hmm. i thought it was i thought it was cool i liked what it was doing uh the drums reminded me a lot of the fury of the furries um i think it's the mountain stage that is what it really kind of felt like yeah um yeah what did you think of that Uh, i think you're kind of right on the money there i feel like uh, I, well, the drum kit here sounds very um, generic. Like it probably was like a 404 or an 808 drum machine that they took the samples mm-hmm. from. Something that's kind of ubiquitous. Everybody has access to these drum samples. Um, 
So I feel like you're probably pretty accurate there because a lot of those old Amiga guys would take, you know, percussion samples from these drum machines anyway. Mm -hmm. So you're probably hearing that correctly there. Uh, I like the bass line in this a lot. It's got a very, like, slow decay and kind of a slow attack as well. It's like... Yeah. Um, Yeah. So they kind of take that warm, um, kind of a more solid-sounding bass, but then kind of, like decay the uh the attack and the release i really like that about it and it felt good it was kind of a simpler track uh like you said it didn't really feel too much like a boss the sound effects didn't detract too much from it i think maybe we're getting used to the sound effects at this point so (laughs) you know maybe it's not as as distracting maybe by the third time i listen to this soundtrack once i've got the whole show edited and up i won't even notice the sound effects anymore and i'll be like oh i really like that one a lot more now but um (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I feel like when taken into account from the epic journey that the level music was, this feels kind of like anticlimactic. Yeah. The pacing for this game sort of overall is very... All over the place. Yeah. Yeah. At least what we can glean from the music, it seems very, very erratic. Yeah. Uh, and, And I don't know if that's because our theory that there might be different gameplay styles or just that some stages might be puzzle stages and others might be action stages or some might be race the clock or get there in time stages and others might be attack your enemy stages. You know, there could be different kinds of themes. It would be nice to have had actual level names for each of these, you know, like level two, stage three, jungle or uh, the Cave of Sorrows or uh-huh. uh, Macarinaville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, but we're kind of, uh, you know, stabbing in the dark with these, so... Um, the, the most blind of blind listens. Yeah, it would be neat to, like, maybe watch a playthrough of this on YouTube and kind of line up these tracks to uh, the actual levels themselves and see what each one uh, has in store and where they, where they go. We, we, we'll, I'm, we won't have time to do that at the end of this show, but it would be fun to... Um, at least what I'll, maybe what I'll try to do is is link to a YouTube video of a playthrough in the mm-hmm. show notes, so that uh, people listening out there, you guys can um, won't have to dig too deep to kind of find out anything about this game uh, once we've gone through the whole episode. So, yeah, uh, ready to move on to stage two? Ready. All right, stage two from level four of Nova Storm. Let's hit it. That was stage two from level four of Nova Storm. Again, this one takes a little bit of a turn at the end, and I thought it started getting really, really good. And I'm like, I'm looking at the, you know, time remaining on my <laughs> music player on my computer, and I'm like, I'm see, I'm hearing the saxophone come in, and I'm like, oh, this sounds really good, but there's only 15 seconds left of the song, mm-hmm. so I know it's not going to be. Uh, I'm going to have to enjoy it while it lasts because I'm not going to hear it for that much. Yeah. Uh, what do you, you think of this track? Uh, we were talking about the sampling of the different instruments. I thought the bass sounded really great and the sort of distorted electric guitar was nice. Mm-hmm. Even, even the saxophone was maybe not the most realistic sounding, but I thought it worked really well. So for once, the instruments seemed pretty on point for this track. At least nothing jumped out at me as a standout, really terrible sample like in some of the other tracks. 
Yeah, and and that was what we were talking about, too, is that we've got a great kind of distorted guitar sample here that would have sounded great in that really cheesy solo that we listened to from Level 4 Stage 1. So why why are they making these instrument choices? I don't know. Very, very strange. Uh, But, you know, if, if we're placing this correctly in time being early to mid 90s you know this music live streaming music was was still in its infancy Mm -hmm. in in terms of video game music goes so the guys doing these pieces of music might not be very experienced and were just doing the best that they could and 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 doing the best that they could is great i mean i really enjoy the soundtrack i just some of these some of these decisions that seem comical to us, maybe if we were listening to it back then, it would seem totally normal. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just that we're listening to it with more experienced ears. Sure. And because I, I don't want it to sound like I don't like what I'm hearing, because I really do like what I'm hearing. No, I, I'm coming more from a point of curiosity. Like, why? Why? What, right, what was yeah. the logic? What was the choice made? Why was the choice made? Exactly. And like like you said, we'll probably never find out. But at the same time. Uh, it's fun to kind of wonder yeah. about it. Yeah. So uh, we're going to hear another boss theme coming up next. This is the level four stage two boss. I'm crossing my fingers for more saxophone. Mm. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. Saxophone. It kind of got got short cut on that last track. So, uh, And if there's no sax, we'll just have to deal with it. Anyways, we'll be right back. That was the level four stage two boss from Nova Storm. We are very close to the end of this game. There's only two more levels. I, uh, you know, this is a very simple one. A a lot of this boss music really seems to kind of follow the same pattern of just having uh, like about a minute of kind of an evenly toned uh, instrument palette. Uh, It just kind of serves more like a background environmental uh, ambiance right some sound effects going on in there it ends cold which makes me think again this is kind of a timed battle where uh you basically have a minute to beat this boss and if you don't something happens you either have to f- try to face it again or mm-hmm. uh, you just move on because you've survived for a minute or what have you i don't know any any particular thoughts on this one anything you liked about it the boss stages are all pretty bland but for some reason they have like a real bruce irons type wailing on the drums in the background <laughs> like it yeah. sounds like in a giant sewer pipe or something just sort of <laughs> sitting there in the tunnel and then, i mean if if it's a 90s game that that was the style huge snares are just a hallmark of of late 80s early 90s music so mm-hmm. um I, I feel like that would have fit right at home with the contemporary music of its time uh had this been released around that time so um yeah good stuff all right so let's move on to stage three from level four of nova storm
You just heard level four, stage three from the game Nova Storm. What did you think, Ed? Well, this one kind of reminded me a little bit of stage one in that it uh, kind of went on a little bit of an adventure. It's uh, kind of half the adventure that stage one was, but um, uh-huh. I don't know. I liked it a lot. I, th- I, I thought there was a lot of really good bass work in this song. Yeah. Two different bass lines and two different kind of keys, but... Um, you know, there was a much lower kind of plodding uh, funk rock style bass line. And then when the song kind of elevated towards the end, uh, it just took on this tone that was really rich and almost felt like two bass tones at the same time. I, I don't really know how to describe it, but I really kind of focused on that bass and really enjoyed it. The rest of it sounded very uh, like we were uh, talking about near the beginning of the show, very kind of top 40 MTV, uh-huh. uh, 80s, 90s kind of a sound. There was kind of a, this horn section synthesizer at the beginning mm-hmm. that had a really good sound to it, too, that I enjoyed listening to. What'd you, what'd you like about it? I liked the first half a lot more when it mm. was more of the 80s pop song vibe. I agree with you that the bass was strong throughout, even though it was in pretty distinct parts, sort of. And I don't know, the second half of the song was maybe a little bit t- too repetitive and less melodic or yeah, something. I think it was more for the intensity. I think something was building yeah, up. Yeah, sure. I did misspeak, actually, earlier. I said that there were uh, four stages in level four, but there's actually only three. So this this is technically the final stage. Oh, okay. So that ending there with the crazy sound effects going on, there must be... You must be approaching the final the structure building area where your the source of all your Uh evil is coming from so i imagine those crazy sound effects were some sort of security system or armaments or guys firing giant lasers at you or something um this does not have a last stage feel to me no you're right it doesn't i i would expect something much more bombastic maybe militaristic sounding Something that would be the theme of the bad guys is usually what you hear during a last level Mm -hmm. in in most video games. And this still feels like like your own theme, you know, like the bad guys have never really taken control of anything. Right. But there are two two interesting tracks ahead. The next track is called Stage 3 Boss, but then after that is Stage 3 Head. So, uh, I don't know. I hope we get more of the charming accent of the... Australian British American hybrid that we've been treated to. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's move on uh, and get some boss, and then we'll move on after that and get some head. So we'll be right back. Oh my! After listening to uh, level four, stage three, boss.
And we're back. That was level four, stage three, boss, or uh, as we are predicting, the final boss Mm -hmm. of Nova Storm. And maybe they made all the other boss music mellow Mm -hmm. to make this relatively sound like boss music, like really intense. Because even, even by normal boss music standard, this is pretty mellow, but... In comparison with the other boss music in this game, it's like, whoa, this is intense. Yeah, like, yeah. strap in. This is the real last boss. Exactly. Uh, I, I got like a um, uh, Top Gun feel, mm-hmm. uh, but Top Gun, like if uh, Maverick just like popped a bunch of Xanax before he went mm-hmm. out on a sortie. So, I don't know. What were your opinions on this? You got Top Gun. I got more Baywatch from this, which I think would be maybe more in line with the mellowness. Yeah. I thought that it definitely reads as boss music, though, which the rest of the game has sort of suffered from readability a bit at times. Yeah. I liked it. I thought I, I could I could see playing some sort of... I don't, I don't know how you play this game. I don't know how it works. I still can't visualize it. At least you could drop this in a game and you could have it be your boss music. And I agree that it's not the intensity of a lot of other games but uh compared to the rest of the soundtrack for sure yeah i mean i i would i would not be upset if i got to a boss and this music was playing in the background i did like a minute and 40 in uh after hearing what i what i thought was a pretty live set of you know people playing uh, (laughs) rock instruments i was taken aback at that cheesy guitar sample that they decided to reuse in this uh i just i i don't know I'm just throwing up my hands because I, I, yeah. I doesn't make any sense to me. The way that they're all mixed together as though no one would notice <laughs> right. is really jarring. It's like anachronistic almost. Uh, yeah, it it's, is. It's weird. It is. But uh, I'm, I'm, I, w- I want to get into the next track because I want to know why it's called Head. Uh, so, uh-huh. yeah, the, the file name is Level 4, Stage 3, Head. Maybe the boss has a final form. And it turns into a giant head. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I can come up with for why this might be called that. Yeah. Um, this is the final piece of music before the ending and credits theme at the end of the game. So let's listen to level four, stage three, head from Nova Storm. Four, stage three, head. Uh, so scratch, weird. scratching mine, uh, yeah. big time. Uh, it feels, it feels like you know you get those demo songs on your like you know kid's first keyboard, and it lets mm-hmm. you change the yes. tempo of those demo yes. songs, and you used to just like speed it all the way up, and and then you'd get something that sounds very much like this. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It it sounds like like Super Nintendo music to me. I think the the the, the drums were very uh, kind of tinny sounding, and then that guitar sample was just mm-hmm. uh, two notes kind of played in an interval. Uh, I, and that that starry sound effect that sounds like uh, something out of Kirby. Yeah, I, I don't. Everything is just a mishmash of sounds. It's still kind of. I'm still processing it all. It's just kind of swimming around in my brain, and I really. 
need to see a visual on the screen to <laughs> maybe make sense of what just happened here. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the weirdest track so far, I think. And not what I was expecting either. I mean, based on the boss track, I was expecting maybe a more intense version of that rock song we just listened to. And I guess uh-huh. technically this is a more intense rock track, but it it feels more stripped down, but just faster. So I don't know what they were going for when when deciding that. So Yeah, I don't... It's... I mean, like, it's very strange. I don't... I did... It's not something that, like, I don't hate it. It's not... It's just it's a weird experience to listen to this. But by by itself without context, yes, it's a it's a very weird piece of music, and th- yeah, like I said, I, I feel like I want to uh, definitely see where this came from in order to make more sense of it. Uh, but I'm very interested in listening to uh, our next track, which is the ending and credits themes. I believe these are these are two themes in one track, uh, and this will be the first piece of music from the game that we're listening to that doesn't uh, take place during any gameplay. So this might be more of a real kind of song. Final prediction, Ed. And and what do you think about the uh, the song itself, the credits? Do you think we're going to get some more blasty guitar? I think for the... Now, you know what? I, I'm, th- I'm feeling for ending and credits we're going to get mellow 80s stuff. That seems to be this composer's kind of go-to for a- any sort of uh, epic, like those that five minute level four stage one track. It, it was eighties and nineties. I think mm-hmm. I think we're going to hear more of that. I think that when whenever a significant thing happens on the screen, that's what he likes to compose in. So I'm going to go with that. What about you? I feel like that makes sense, but there's so much of this game that doesn't make any sense. So I <laughs> am <true>. going <laughs> to say, uh, let's go back. We're going to go back into Dance Village. We're going to be we're going to be dancing, and we're going to have some. Let's see. Maybe they'll get some more of that Jamaican feel to it. Okay. Okay. Maybe with a little Macarena thrown uh-huh. in. Yeah. Maybe some steel drum samples for a uh, festive flair. Jamaica Arena. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And final prediction for video game system and genre and year. <clears throat> Let's yeah. see how close we can get. Uh, well, not the Wonders one. No. No. Your initial prediction... Has definitely gone by the wayside. I'm I'm so, so bad at predicting the system. Uh, for I think every blind listen, I have been way off, and this is no no exception because I am. So I'm just gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with the oddball pick of the Amiga CD because okay. I'm trying to think of a, what what a weird system could be, and that's what we're gonna say for me. All right, sounds good. Um. You know, with with streaming audio, it's it's so difficult to tell because it really could be from anything. I'm going to maybe kind of avoid... I'm pretty familiar with, like, 95% of the U.S. released Sega CD games. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't remember hearing this one on the roster, so... I'm kind of going to go by process of elimination and maybe say not Sega CD. Um, okay, that's good. M- maybe 3DO? Maybe... Wouldn't If it was 3DO, do you really think you would not have you know, <sighs> known this game intimately? I have, a, I have a lot of 3DO games and I've played them Sitting all. on your shelf? <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of anything besides... Like, Amiga CD really seems to be uh, the best... In terms of... Um, Although, it would be a masterful trick to pull on you if there's a 3DO game that you had not heard of. Yeah, I, I, dude, I would load it up right now and start playing. I got the system right next to me. Um, but Amiga CD, I think, is a is a well-informed pick. Also, what else was I going to say? Maybe like a arcade laser active game. Oh, You know, okay. like Dragon's like Lair. Like Dragon's that, Lair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go with... Just because you picked the Amiga, I'm gonna say arcade. You know, you said laser active. What if it's just a straight up laser disc game? Okay, I could, I could, I could, I could see that too. Which would explain a lot of why it was so impossible to find, and also, oh, it just explain a lot because that would also be an FMV game. Yep, yep, and explain why there wasn't any just traditional kind of uh, sequenced audio or anything. Uh huh. Right. Okay. All right. So, so we have some some vague predictions. 
Um, give me a year. I think we are both in agreement that it is sometime towards the middle of the 90s. Mm-hmm. I am going to say there's still some there's some like deep 80s roots in some of these songs, but the kind of like grungy guitar makes me think. I'm going to say 94. Okay. And maybe just a little bit ahead of its time on some parts. Yeah, I'm going to say 96. Uh, just because I feel like 94 might have been a little too early for CD technology for the kind of sounds that we're That's getting here. That's a good point. Here. That's a good point. So, I don't know. And also, I just want to be different from you so one of us can be right. And one of us That's could be fair. wrong. Okay. <laughs> or, or both of us could be wrong. So yeah, let's listen to ending and credits. Uh, when we come back, we will unearth the secrets of Nova Storm. That was the ending and credits theme from Nova Storm. A little bit of information that we gleaned from this via the 
dialogue mm-hmm. in the track. Uh, evidently, you are in a ship of some sort called the Scavenger Four, so we know that. Um, there seems to be a maybe a group of people on your ship. You're not the only one. Mm-hmm. If that sounds like something we could glean from it, uh, anything else you think we learned? Sounds like they are escaping, so that would lend itself to the whole like alien planet type thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was definitely a felt or sounded like there was something collapsing, and then you were mm-hmm. uh, flying away from it uh, in typical game ending style. I kind of feel like there's like an alien ripoff where you like go in, you find the eggs, and then that that would go back to the earlier dialogue about he doesn't know how many. What did he say earlier? The other big chunk of dialogue we got like midway through. Oh, I don't know what's in this cave, yeah. but I'm going to find out. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's some, like... Maybe there's a bunch of heads. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you know, not <laughs> eggs, but they're just heads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. How do the heads come more heads? I don't know. But yeah, again, we got some uh, very nice, meaty bass, uh, good, chunky percussion, and just a really cheesy, midi synthesizer flute. Right over the top of it which is it's kind of endearing at this point i don't know i feel like it's che- it's cheesy but like 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 i like to call it bruce irons cheesy it's, it's got a good quality to it you know it's um i don't know whether it was intentional or not but uh it's kind of become like the trademark for the soundtrack so i'm kind of maybe coming <laughs> around full circle well on it again let me ask you this this is t- somewhat well no it's totally unrelated but what are your <laughs> thoughts on midi generally because are you, like, what's your baseline? Um, I mean, I feel like MIDI is, is a means to an end. I feel like MIDI is a great way to, uh, how do I say this? To demonstrate how a song is composed, but not necessarily to produce a final product of music uh-huh. with. You know what I mean? Like, it's a great experimental tool. Yeah. Um, there are some really great MIDI sound fonts out there, which... If you listen to them, you would think it was a final production. But this all feels like that very basic uh, general instruments yep. MIDI pack yeah. that you get. Uh, yeah. And that that's that's what I'm talking about specifically when I'm talking about, you know, not final product stuff. And it feels like he never, um, like he meant to go in and get a better sound font in there, but just forgot and it was time to hand the song in. So he was like, uh, I guess you're just getting this. So enjoy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe their licensing deal fell through. It was too expensive. So they get the sound font that came with their sound card. (laughs) Here's your sound blaster and your MIDI pack. Sound blaster 16. There you go. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to uh, start learning a little bit more about this game? Yeah. I'm. All right. This has been a confusing run, and I am dying to find out the answers. So I pulled it up on Moby Games while we were listening, and it turns out you were correct. It was released in 1994. Oh. So you've got that I'm much right behind it. I'm right once this whole day. You were also incorrect mm-hmm. as far as Amiga CD. It did not come out on Amiga. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it did come out on the 3DO. Oh. Uh, came out for DOS. He snuck it in. He snuck it in. That sneaky, sneaky Scott. Yeah. Um, it came out on the FM Towns. Okay. This is not the Towns uh, version, right? The, right. Place, the, the PlayStation and Sega CD. So... A whole bunch wow. of stuff. And you were so um, sure of Sega CD. Yeah, you know what? Sega CD, it came out in 1994. It came out on 1994 for the 3DO. Um, and then PlayStation in 95. Okay, now that I'm looking at the cover for the PlayStation game, I've definitely seen it. Yeah. Uh, it's described as an arcade slash rail shooter, which makes sense. Okay, yeah, rail shooter. Let's see here. Mm, Cygnosis. Yeah, Cygnosis, so they definitely had some quality stuff going on. The FM Towns title of the game was actually Scavenger 4, oh, so okay. they named it after the ship that you fly. All right, so we've got one more track to listen to, and this is the game intro track. Uh, this is what I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Uh, Scott asked us to listen to this last because there is information in the game intro which would spoil a lot of the secrets and blind listen elements so we're going to listen to that right now and we'll be right back and then we'll kind of divulge the rest of the info and read scott's testimonial when we come back
centuries ago, our forefathers left Earth in search of a new paradise. With them, they took the ecosystem of our world, frozen on board the giant arcs. Artificial intelligence guided our ships through the void, while the pioneers slept and dreamt of a new beginning. The machines maintained and monitored every aspect of our existence. They began to evolve. Forming their own consciousness and self-awareness, but warped by their history of servitude. We were no longer masters of what we had created, but it slaves. Carabex took control of our system, building huge war machines to enforce its rule. Orbital habitats were destroyed, populations wiped out, millions died! Starcore were swamped with desperate cries for assistance. civilization good luck all right well that was the intro from nova storm released in 1993 actually i think it was 94 okay so you were kind of right so it was 93 on some systems i think that was the first release 94 on the fm towns and then yeah 94 on the fm towns uh, and then 95 on the playstation yeah developed and published by psychnosis and composed by rick E day or Eed E D E. Yeah, I don't. I was looking at that too. Never heard of that guy. No, but I also understand why Scott told us not to listen to this track at the beginning of the show. Otherwise, we'd know everything there is to know about the entire game and its world. Um, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah. explains everything that you need to know. But yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it's 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 musically there's not much to it. It's just that kind of military drum core role in the background right. with a lot of exposition. Um, but pretty well done exposition too. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. I want to I wanna watch the full motion video that accompanies this. Um, hopefully I won't be too disappointed. Uh, but Psygnosis is, they make good stuff. I mean, didn't didn't Michael from Forever Sound Version just do a Psygnosis episode? Not too, Oh, he did a, a Destruction Derby episode and that, were, that was a game that was made by Psygnosis. Uh-huh. So yeah. Uh, yeah. he was kind of extolling the virtues of uh of them yeah this this game got sort of panned by the critics it looks like interesting i don't know so now i got to figure out which version i want to play it on because i have a sega cd a 3do and a playstation i'm assuming the playstation will probably be the best uh considering i'd probably get the clearest full motion video the playstation is the only version of the game with full screen fmv and it features a redesigned minimalistic hud okay Interesting. So maybe I'll play a couple of different versions and find out what the differences are. The DOS version has the original soundtrack. Oh, interesting. Original version of the soundtrack. I wonder what the difference is there. Hmm. I'll check yeah, that out. Yeah, I don't know. But I wonder if that has something to do with uh, what's, what uh, Brian was saying about not the version that Scott asked for. 
Oh, you're probably right. So this is probably the version from the PlayStation slash 3DO, uh-huh. et cetera, et cetera. And the DOS would be the original. Yeah, maybe it, the DOS is just either MIDI or uh, like, you know, ad lib, something like that. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Oh, in- oh, interesting. I wonder if that the whole time we were complaining about the instruments not sounding synergistic with one another in, in reality if we got the DOS version it would just be across the board it would match and it would have sound differently yeah yeah or maybe those were, those instruments were kind of like holdovers from the DOS version but they kind of built uh-huh. more advanced instruments around it for the for the remake of the soundtrack who knows I'm even more curious now yeah uh, so let's read Scott's testimonial and then oh, we'll yeah, yeah. look a little bit more deeper into the kind of game that it is so Scott writes Nova Storm. Is it a racing game? Is it a shooter? Wait, it's both. Hey, I was right about that too. <laughs> Straight out of the 90s with that unmistakable sound. Yeah. While I was trying to locate the 3DO OST as an original 3DO owner such as Ed, mm. ultimately it was just too elusive. And instead, with the help of Brian, we were able to rip the DOS version. Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. I never owned the game itself, but had rented it from our local rental store, the Video Den Classic, and the OST just really lodged itself in my brain. I requested the Dyad himself as the VG ambassador for this blind listen, whoop, whoop. because I think it ties in nicely with his recent space episode. Uh, uh-huh. And of course, the Ed Dyad combo always makes for some memorable commentary. Cheers, fellas. Well, cheers, Scott. This was. Cheers to you, Scott. This was a crazy episode, and I did not know what to expect. I, you know. I was kind of based on the name, kind of expe- and 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 based on the first couple tracks we listened to. I was kind of expecting like maybe more of the same for all twenty eight tracks. But as yeah, as the soundtrack yeah, I went on, I started getting really, uh, really curious. Like I, like of all the blind listens so far, this was really the game where I was like, "What is this?" Right, <laughs> I really right. really wanted to know, and I really really wanted to play it too. So. Um, the last couple of ones, I was really, I liked the soundtrack a lot, and I felt like I would be satisfied just listening to the soundtrack, but this soundtrack ties so much into the game that I felt like I really needed to understand the game in order for the soundtrack to make sense. Does that, mm-hmm. that make sense to you? Did you have yeah. to, like, the same kind of feel there? Yeah, I was, I just, I needed pieces to be put into place to wrap my mind around this. Agreed. And I think, I think this... This helped. We, you know what? We were pretty, pretty close on a lot of stuff, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I suggested Wolf well, Motion Video. We, we kind of figured that out right at the beginning. No, you sniffed that out right away. Yeah, we hit the nail on the head there. Um, I said maybe it was some sort of a game where there's multiple modes where you have to race, or maybe it's a shooting game, and that I guess there was kind of a combination of the two in there. Not sure too much about how the bosses and stuff work, but there is a little developer biography on Moby Games that I can read. Um, so uh, Rick Ide also goes by Richard Ide, and he's worked in game audio since 1992 on Amiga and ST audio. So, hey, maybe those Amiga influences you were hearing mm-hmm. uh, were coming from that. He currently works for Dolby Laboratories and is the managing director of his own company, Game Sound Limited, which specializes in Dolby Digital 5.1 audio soundtracks for games. His employment history stems from a background as a session musician and sound engineer, and he worked as an audio development manager for Psygnosis and Sony for three years. His credit it's include Psygnosis, Gremlin, Reflections, Infogrames, M- MTV, and Play 51. So he's had, he's been around, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. He started off in 1993 with Wiz and Liz on the Amiga and the Genesis. Uh, Innocent until caught. He did sound effects for that. Wait a minute. He did the, he did the, Wiz, it wasn't the arranger. He did Wiz and Liz. Cause I know that's a, it's a key glyph jam. Yeah. Yeah. He did the music, music huh. and sound. Oh, all right. And I think he did both the Genesis version and the, uh, well, no, those are the Amiga credits. So Genesis version. Okay, so Matt Furness did the Genesis version of Wiz and Liz. Okay, but yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, because I remember Emily talking about liking Matt Furness so much because of the Wiz and Liz soundtrack. So mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. we go with that. Um, what else is there? Sentient in 1997. Uh, he did the Dolby Mastering for Airblade in 2001. He was an audio technology consultant on Grand Theft Auto Vice City. 
He did the 5.1 surround sound mixing for Burnout. Uh, and his last game was the IndyCar series in 2003. He was credited for audio. So, interesting. He's got a couple games under his belt. He's got his own company, so uh, he knew what he was doing for sure. I mean, this this soundtrack uh-huh. basically... Uh, it must have taken a lot of work to get music that integrates itself into the gameplay. You know, it's basically like scoring a movie, but also with interactive elements so i guess you needed somebody with a lot of chops to be able to pull that off um especially this being what one year after his first video game music credit so he must Uh he must have been working on other music projects probably in music and video before this i mean he said he has some credits for mtv so uh he was probably working on scoring some tv or movies or something before this so very cool yeah and this seems more like like you said it's more more like scoring a movie, for sure. I am I am very impressed. So, Scott, thank you so much for shooting this soundtrack our way. I don't think I ever would have even given it a thought without you introducing it to us. So I definitely want to play this game now. Uh, I might just check out all the different versions just to see what the differences are. Did you are. have a favorite track from the from the soundtrack? Yeah, you know, that, that five-minute opus, I think, remains yeah, my favorite. Yeah. I, I just really... I liked that I could kind of close my eyes and feel like I was on a journey when I Mm -hmm. listened to that track. Uh, I really want to see that music lined up with the uh, full motion video scene. Uh, I feel like five minutes of gameplay is going to be very intense for a game like this. Um, Yeah. So I kind of want to experience that for myself. What what about you? What was your favorite? I can't remember which one was my favorite, but I like the Egyptian styled tracks i think were overall my favorite that was uh the level two one the level two series mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah, those were cool yeah i thought it was uh more more game like Mm -hmm. maybe and there was some fun instruments and i think it was very cohesive Uh, i think it was maybe the best version of it that's also kind of where we uh started turning around and realizing that this might not have been you know the same sound this the same sound over and over and over again that there was yeah. actually some some dynamic aspect to this right um, right so that was a that was a cool thing too man all right so it's 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 very late we've been recording a long time ben thank you so much for hanging <laughs> out with me i really i really had a good time i love i feel like whenever i do this kind of a show with somebody i feel like i, I have a connection to them now because now we we kind yeah. of share this soundtrack uh-huh. you know what i mean yeah this is our song. We can play it at our wedding. Exactly. So when we're at the prom and the last, uh, the last dance of the night comes on, and it's a mm-hmm. it's a five minute stage theme, we can mm-hmm. we can slow dance and never leave each other. That's right. For for at least five minutes, you can have your your cupid shuffle, right? And then you will have this, and then the weird grindy lasers will come in, and <laughs> yeah. everybody will evacuate the dance floor. Yeah, because the robots will be taking over, as right. usual. So. Uh, where can we find you on the web? This is your time to do your plugs, well, sir. Well, uh, I'm on Twitter, which uh, I am normally pretty active, at the Dyad. I'm on uh, Facebook in the VGM Podcast Fans group a lot. I'm on Ed's Discord all the time, the <laughs> VG true. Embassy Discord. <laughs> you can follow my own podcast, The Dyad Presents, at the thediadpresents.com blogspot.com i believe is the website url or you could just search for the dyad presents i am i've got the seo locked down on that so you'll be able to find me pretty easily excellent and as usual i want to thank indira j for the art and trevin hughes otherwise known as dread for the podcast theme song you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play. You can find us on Stitcher. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes and you would like to leave a rating if you enjoy the show, I would very much appreciate that. That will help our show get a little bit more visibility when people are looking for cool video game related podcasts. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash the VG Embassy. And we're on Twitter and Instagram also at the vg embassy and as always i want to thank our patrons for financially supporting the show we've gotten a ton of new equipment we just recorded our first uh embassy exclusive 
a Patreon exclusive episode with three microphones, which is quite a feat because Hooray. we are a we are a three host show, and we've been kind of sharing two microphones, and we've gotten a lot of echoey voices and stuff. So we're finally going to be releasing a really quality three microphone show uh, with the help of our Patreon patrons. And those patrons are at the Taurus level, Chris Murray, Cameron Childs, and Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast. Our VGM series, Chris Myers, Donovan Orofino, you, Mr. Ben, the Dyad Dishman, this guy that just kind of hangs out and listens to weird soundtracks with me, and mm. uh, John Mixix Master Jekyll, and Chris Steenerson. Our audio attache members, Cameron Worma, Carlos and Scott McElhone are featured VGM requester of the day. And as usual, our VG ambassador, the patron saint of VGM podcasts, Alex, the messenger messenger. Again, Ben Dyad, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I had a ton of fun and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, checking out this game on, uh, on YouTube and, playing it on my actual tv and and like i said so in the in in the show notes i'll I'll find a good playthrough of this game if one exists and i'll i'll put the youtube link in the show notes so you guys can check it out but uh thank you for hanging out with me so late at night and and listening to the soundtrack with me well thank you for having me and thanks to scotty mac for thinking of me for sure and uh look forward to another dyad and ed show very soon we are as soon as I can get my rear end gear. Yeah, we're polishing up the final research topics on our next Dyad Challenge episode, and that'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys, we will see you back in two weeks with a new episode of the VG Embassy. This is Ed, your VGM minister, signing out. <laughs>